Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rhino and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Stingray 2 which is an Era 3 Western Alliance light tank in the Cold War game mode. It comes after the Stingray in Era 2 and it leads on to the MA AGS and the VFM5 which we'll also be taking a look at in comparison to the Stingray 2 and I've also decided to compare the Stingray 2 to the Type 88A which is a bottom Era 3 level medium tank for the Eastern Alliance um, to give you a good indication of how it compares to a medium tank and the reason I've done that is because it's kind of a hybrid between a medium and a light it's a fairly large profile light tank it has the concealment of a light tank but it has the kind of single fire gun power of a medium tank it plays a very good sniping role so that's why I'm comparing it to the type 88A I'm going to give you a rundown of these stats um, here in this Excel spreadsheet compared to the MA AGS, the VFM5 and the Type 88A. I'm going to show you my commander and equipment setup um, and show you the updated stats here highlighted in yellow just a little bit later on should you wish to play the Stingray 2 like I have in the two gameplays that I'm going to follow up this stats review with. I'm showing you how I try and get the most out of the Stingray 2 and what kind of games you can expect if you play the Stingray 2 well. So in this comparison, as you can expect, the hit points is the uh, worst in this comparison as it, as it is the bottom level era three light tank. 3,100 hit points is quite low and they don't go very far, so you don't want to get hit too often, especially with the high alpha damages and high DPMs in era three. Um, 565 meters view range is fairly decent and you can boost that up even more with a good commander and equipment setup. And with your concealment, you should be able to get forward and spot those uh, larger heavy tanks out no problem whilst remaining undetected yourself. In terms of the mobility you'll see here that the engine is a fairly lackluster engine and this can be a bit of a pain to grind up to. It's a very sluggish light tank whilst you are um, trying to get through the grind so I highly recommend taking advanced powertrain and traction system um, whilst this is stock um, and maybe even keeping it like I do once you have ground the Stingray 2 um, to elite status and you'll see the updated stats here which I'll talk you through in more detail in just a little bit but this 550 horsepower engine um, means you have a power to weight ratio of 24.1 which is okay but it isn't the best um, especially in era 2 when everything is extremely fast and as you can see here it's uh, by no means as good as the MA AGS or the VFM5 um, you can go 69.2 kilometers an hour forwards 24.1 kilometers an hour backwards which can feel quite slow indeed and the traverses aren't the best but they are um, at a level where you can improve them to a decent level so it's 42 degrees a second on the turret on the hull sorry and 44 degrees a second on the turret so um, it's not quite as good as the MA HGS it's comparable to the VFM5 and you can get it to a good level if you choose to run the commander and equipment setup that I have done um, in the gameplays you'll see in just a little bit so now we're going to skip on to the gun then and all of the guns in this comparison have a 105 millimeter so it's nice and easy to compare them um, and all of these guns fire APF, SDS as standard and premium and HE or HESH as the third ammunition choice. The alpha damage on this 105mm gun is 480 alpha damage in the standard and premium and that's the same for all of these tanks in this comparison. The only difference is the HE rounds on the Stingray 2 and on the MA AGS have 20 more alpha damage than the VFM 5. Um, in terms of their shell velocity, it's very nice indeed at 1493 meters a second on the standard APF SDS and 1505 meters a second on the premium rounds, so it's very good for firing at mid to long ranges. And 736 meters a second is pretty decent on the HE rounds. Um, you don't have to give too much lead at all, especially on the standard and premium rounds, but yeah, do bear in mind that it does drop by half with the HE rounds. I only carry um, a handful to fire at like the armor tanks if I want to try and boost that DPM up a little bit. In terms of the alpha damage then on the HE it's 590 uh, yeah which is the 20 more than the 570. You have 270 millimeters of penetration which is the same as the MA AGS but 20 uh, millimeters of penetration less than the VFM5. Um, in terms of the standard penetration it is very low at 448 uh, millimeters of penetration and it only goes up to 518 but this is a sort of bottom level era 3 light tank so it is to be expected and I carry plenty of premium APF SDS rounds 
Um, so I make the most out of every round that I use because it doesn't carry very, 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 very many rounds of ammunition at all, um, as we'll get onto in just a little bit. Um, it's not too bad uh, when you're sort of firing at short to mid ranges, but when you're firing at long ranges, that penetration drops off quite dramatically with the APF SDS rounds. So it can be quite hard to penetrate the thicker armor plates and the spaced armor and the ERA armor and composite armor that is in uh, era three of the Cold War game mode. Um, so now we're going to jump on to the gun handling and as you can see the aim time is the same for all of these tanks at a respectable 1.7 seconds and that goes down to a good level uh, with your commander and equipment setup. The accuracy here at 0.27 is the worst in this comparison. Um, it's uh, a long way behind the VFM5 but you can get the 0.27 down to a very good level with the commander uh, bonuses that you can get on the commanders after 6.0 so that's nothing to worry about at all. The DPM is respectable at 4300.8. It is worse uh, by 100 than the MAAGS and by a couple hundred than the BFM5. Um, however, that does jump up to a good level uh, if you choose to really use rapid loading um, on your commander and things like that, as we'll talk you through in just a second. The base reload is 6.7 seconds for a 105mm gun with 480 alpha damage, so that's very nice indeed. It does carry only 48 uh, rounds of ammunition. This was buffed recently, but you can still run out of ammunition very easily indeed, so you want to make your shots count. Uh, the best in this comparison is the MA AGS that carries 56, uh, but it does also have a respectable 8 degrees of gun depression and 18 degrees of elevation, um, but that is not as good as the MA AGS and the VFM 5. So I'll quickly head over here to the second sheet and we'll compare to the Type 88A and see how it holds up against a medium tank. You'll see here that the uh, hit points are only 150 left, less than a level, sort of a bottom level three medium tank, so that's not too bad at all, and it does have the superior view range. In terms of the mobility, you'd expect it to be better than a medium tank, but in fact it isn't um, really the case. It does have a worse horsepower than the Type 88A, and only a slightly better power to uh, weight ratio. In terms of its forward speeds, it is better, but only by a little bit, and the reverse speed of 24.1 is the same as the Type 88A, and doesn't feel particularly good at all. It has worse hold traverse than the Type 88A, but um, slightly better turret traverse, so it's kind of very comparable to a Type 88A, but then everything pretty much in Era 3 is extremely mobile and will catch up with you or keep up with you, so you want to try and uh, flank and use your concealment uh, to try and surprise your enemies and snipe from mid to long ranges in the Stingray 2 to get the most out of it, at least in my opinion anyway. Um, in terms of the guns then and the comparison um, on both of these 105mm guns, uh, the ammunition is the same. The shell velocity is very comparable, although the HE rounds have better shell velocity on the Type 88A. Um, the one thing to notice is how much better the penetration is on the standard and premium rounds on the medium tank. Um, unfortunately, light tanks do have that uh, worse penetration and 518 is absolutely miles behind the 650 millimeters of penetration on the premium APF SDS rounds that the Type 88A carries. However, you do have the same alpha damage, so you just got to be a little bit more selective with your shots and uh, try not to fire at the thickest part of tanks and choose the weak, the weak points and try and sort of surprise your enemies with your concealment. And lastly, in terms of the gun handling, it's the same aim time at 1.7 seconds only slightly worse accuracy. Um, it has a lot worse DPM than Type 88A, which surprised me when I was looking through this, um, the stats of the Type 88A, so that's something to bear in mind against medium tanks. You don't want to go sort of one-on-one, -on -one, especially with higher level era three medium or heavies, because they will chew you up and you don't have any armor at all. It also carries uh, six rounds less than the Type 88A, um, but it does have uh, twice as good gun depression at eight degrees and one degree more gun elevation at 18 degrees. So that's it for that stats rundown of the Stingray 2 compared to the MAAGS VFM 5 and Type 88A. I'll tell you my commander and equipment setup, the updated stats, and then we'll get stuck into the gameplay. So in terms of my equipment on the Stingray 2, I run Advanced Loader, Advanced Powertrain, and Traction System. And on my commander, I run Sixth Sense, Spawn Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot, and Green Thumb. 
I'm running those last three concealment perks because I want to get as much out of my concealment as possible even though you are a fairly large light tank sort of bordering on medium tank size you can hide in some dense foliage and uh, not everyone always pays attention so it's nice to have that little bit extra um, concealment some gun handling perks there to help the gun handling of the uh, stingray 2 rapid loading to help the dpm and six sensors born leader a standard and on my equipment i run advanced loader to help the dpm and the powertrain and the traction system to help the mobility and if you choose to run that setup You'll see here that you would now have a engine power of 577.5 horsepower, a power to weight ratio of 25.31. You now bumped up your forward speed to uh, 0 0.07 behind uh, 80 kilometers an hour. You've boosted your reverse speed, which is one of the biggest downsides to this tank, to 27.84, so that's a lot better. And you'd now have a hull and turret traverse, which are a lot closer together, so you'll have a hull traverse of 46.2 degrees a second and a turret traverse of 45.89 degrees a second. In terms of the gun handling and DPM with this command and equipment setup, you'll now have an aim time of 1.63 seconds, which is absolutely great, and an accuracy of 0.23, which is phenomenal, and you shouldn't miss two shot, too many shots um, at all, and it doesn't take too long to aim in as well. And your DPM jumps up to 5,534, which is very respectable, and although you can't go one, uh, one against one against a lot of tanks in terms of DPM, um, you can snipe at mid to long ranges and get some good damage racking up and get some good assistance with your concealment getting forward. And that means that you now have a, bait, uh, a reload of 5.2 seconds on this 105mm gun for that 480 alpha damage. So that's it for the stats rundown of the Stingray 2. We'll jump on into the first gameplay now and see how this thing performs. So then we're now into the first gameplay of today's video and we're here on Thiepval Ridge in the Stingray 2 and in this particular replay I'm not fully upgraded. I'm still waiting for the top engine and the top turret but I do have the top gun so do bear that amount in mind whilst you're watching uh, this particular replay. So you'll see here that the mobility is quite good on the Stingray 2. We are slightly ahead of the heavy tanks. Um, behind us and we're going to try and get into a position to get some early sort of scouting um, early doors we're going to try and get into position sit in some foliage and spot some tanks out that hopefully our teammates will shoot and hopefully we can also do some good sniping ourselves um, so what do I think in sort of general give the uh, um, overall opinion of the Stingray 2 well it's not a bad tank at all for a sort of bottom level era 3 tank it does struggle with the uh, penetration and also the reverse speeds and for a light tank you are a fairly large profile light tank so um, you're going to be spotted a lot whilst you fire where other tanks might not do if they're sitting in dense foliage however um, you're just going to want to try and play this like a support medium tank that has extra concealment and that can also scout for itself uh, with its concealment and a fairly good uh, view range you can see here that i've come to this position in j3 i'm trying to get some spots in the open field i'm going to be trying to fire as much as possible through the foliage to reduce uh, or to increase my concealment rating and to reduce the chances of me getting spotted and hopefully I'm going to try and avoid taking too many shots so I can use my speed and my maneuverability and concealment later on to get some um, extra damage in. Unfortunately there you can see the poor reverse speed I didn't get behind the hard cover in time and we take a big chunk and we're already down to sort of 2.2k um, hit points. Uh, we have already picked up 4.1k assistance which is very nice and that's kind of the intention at the start of this battle and we've already got a couple of shots in dealing 861 damage ourselves. You can see here that I carry the enhanced smokescreen and that is because of this large profile. Um, you don't have the mobility to outrun many tanks especially the other light tanks in era 3 and you are a larger profile light tank meaning that um, people will target you. You're going to be an easy target to hit. You don't have any armor and you don't, you're not like a sort of BMP3 that can 
um, sort of outmaneuver the ATGMs and some of the shells by weaving in and out with its fantastic traverse speeds and smaller profile. Um, you're just going to have to make do with this tank and uh, make the most out of its sniping capabilities. You do have that lovely shell velocity meaning you don't have to lead too much at mid to long ranges, um, but you do have to be careful, especially when something like an M1 comes after you because that thing will chew you up with its DPM. So we're going to try and get above its uh, gun line for now he misses a show as we just have enough ability to get out of the way and now we're going to support our heavy tank that have gone in against this M1 where we can. One of the best things to do in a tank like the Stingray 2 is to wait for the sound of the enemy firing or make sure you're watching sort of with the third person camera and then pop round take your shots to reduce the chances of taking um, any shells in retaliation and just uh, stick around with your heavy tanks make sure you're supporting them and try not to um, get in the way of the heavy tanks uh, that was completely um, unintentional uh, luckily there's no team damage in the game we get a shot there into this T72BU we can see from the side that penetration was more than enough with the premium APF SDS that we're firing to go through the T72BU always aim for the tracks to get that extra assistance no matter what class of tank you're playing and now we're going to um, try and get into a position where we can cross this gap and maybe get to the sides and rear of these heavy tanks however i do want to be careful about that so i'm going to pop my smoke screen this is before the smoke screen was updated so that it fires up into the air and gives you more cover and then we're going to cross the gap and try and get um, a different angle on your opponents and that's what you're going to want to do in sniping tanks like uh the stingray 2 and like other medium tanks that are support tanks is try to get um cover on your heavy tanks and your medium tanks that are engaged with other tanks and give different lines of fire um, and support fire and that's just the best way to play this tank and it, it really is just like a hybrid light medium tank and you've just got to do your best to uh, work with the poor reverse speeds the large profile and the poor penetration the concealment does come into play but probably more towards the start of the battle when you get there first and you can spot out and towards the end of the battle when there's less tanks on the battlefield and you can spot out some of the chunkier heavy tanks you can see here that um, it looks like we're going to be winning this game but I'm not going to be risking my hit points because I'm basically a uh, two shot for most guns and a one shot for the ATGMs in era 3 so I'm going to try and get into a position where I can get some flanking fire and I don't want to um, I don't want to risk too much at the moment because it's still quite a close game and I want to try and get the most out of this game as at this point I was still grinding and I wanted the top um, engine and the top turret so we've gone from that position it looks like that position is actually going to be falling but hopefully we can get round to the sides spot anything here towards the sort of 9-0 line of their tanks that like to hide in the spawn um, we get a lovely shell there into the BMP3. We actually outspot him. That might be a sort of commander um, and equipment setup issue there where not everyone obviously always has nine skills. Um, and that is a privilege that sometimes, like I said, I take for granted and you don't always think people would, wouldn't have nine skills, but obviously new players wouldn't. Um, so that's uh, something to bear in mind when things like that happen. Usually a BMP3 would outspot this tank. Uh, no problem and also outmaneuver it as well there you can see the power of the view range against the heavy tank so we do get the spot on that um, heavy tank in the back there uh, fortunately uh, for us he's not looking that way uh, the true vision system can be very nasty for a tank like this because of your larger profile but um, you just got to try and play it sensibly and uh, make moves like I am now when that heavy tank was um, falling back behind that ridge You'll see there that the shell velocity is beautiful, we're getting a shell on that BMP3 and now that we're kind of in the open we're going to pop our um, smoke screen. Hopefully they've forgotten about us and maybe we can get a couple of extra rounds at the end of this battle into the remaining heavy tank and light tank. We get a shot into the BMP3 there, reverse back into the smoke so that they can't just auto lock onto us. Um, somehow I missed that shot, that was just probably bad and I didn't let it fully aim and I kind of flinched a bit but we follow it up with a final show into that BMP3 taking him out and it's just this heavy tank left there's no point in me going too far forwards here I've got more than enough capability to fire at this uh, M182 and penetrate and we reset him on fire dealing some extra damage at the end of the battle and although we're not fully upgraded we had a very good part to play in that battle and a very good result in the Stingray 2 where we finished in the MVP slot with one kill 6k direct damage 7.5k assistance we get the mastery badge 1649 base experience points 
and an all-round decent game in the Stingray 2 and uh, yeah that that's kind of the, the way that you're going to want to play this tank you just want to get into positions to spot early doors support your heavy tanks and your medium tanks that are brawling get as many angles on your opponents as possible and utilize your concealment and uh, yeah play that hybrid light tank and medium tank role so I've got one more gameplay for you we're going to head over there now and see what the result is So you're joining me here on Halbron in the second gameplay of today's video. Uh, we are fully upgraded now. It's an assault on Halbron and we are the defending team, which means that we instantly have an advantage because we can just pick off the tanks as they try and make their way towards our cap circle. This isn't a very fair spawn, but hey ho, I'm going to try and make the most of it. So I'm going to use the mobility to get forward, to try and get some early spots off at anything that's coming in sort of from uh, the center of the map and get some assistance and maybe we'll get some flanking shots towards the south of this map and we'll get to see the sniping capabilities of the Stingray 2 some more. So we've spotted this or someone spotted this uh, Leopard 2A4 and we've got some nice flanking fire um, to the sides and uh, you can see there the shell velocity is more than enough to fire at mid to long range it's, it's just a case of sometimes the penetration won't be enough to even go through the sides of the tracks as we just track that um, Leopard 2A5 and it's all about trying to get as many sniping shots in as possible. Um, this is before the ammo count was buffed, so you can see there we have to be a little bit more careful of how many rounds we're firing. Unfortunately for us, this uh, Leopard 2A5 comes round. Um, no one is shooting him on our team, so I'm going to have to just make the play, take the shots, and get out of uh, get out of dodge. Uh, he did damage our ammo rack but we fixed it i was hoping to avoid eating another shell but he managed to get one just into the corner of our turret uh, i say great shot thinking that for some reason he'd see it but obviously not or maybe it was just sarcastically who knows but we're just trying to get out of the way because we're getting nailed by everything and that's how quickly you can lose uh, damage in the uh, sting rate too uh, it doesn't go very far, the 2,950 hit points, so you do have to play as that sniping um, potential, especially when things get a little bit heated and you can use your mobility and concealment sort of towards the uh, towards the start of the battle, fall back and then use it towards the end of the battle, like I said in the last replay when there are less tanks on the enemy team. Um, there's about half and half bots to sort of real players in this particular battle, um, so it probably the results a little bit easier uh, depending on how good you think the bots are compared to real players but it just gives you a good indication of you know what kind of damage you can get on a good game in the stingray 2 how good the gun handling is the dpm the concealment uh, yeah and the mobility but also how quickly you can lose the damage and the sort of drawbacks of the uh, stingray 2 so now we're firing into the enemy stingray 2 there that is spotted by our team unfortunately for us um, the gun blooms out as we move. It's not the best for firing on the move. It is better for sort of stationary sniping, but uh, kind of needs must. I'm just trying to get out of this position as quick as possible. And in typical uh, sort of it's Robbie Rhino fashion, I'm just driving into the curbs and the buildings and stopping my advance. And uh, if there were more real players in this game, I probably would have got taken out by something camping um, straight ahead of me to the left there up on that sort of sniper's ridge but I'm going to try and get up to the high ground and get some nice flanking fire without getting spotted um, up here into the tanks that are trying to make our way into our capture circle. It's still even at the moment but as it's um, an assault there's only 10 minutes and it's now 6 minutes left uh, on the battlefield so they're going to have to get a move on if they want to and expose themselves some more and hopefully that will give us some nice flanking fire and it's all about trying to find positions like this where you're firing through multiple layers of um, foliage. You're firing at weak points and tanks you know you can fire at because of the low ammo count. Using hard cover to hide your profile, but also using that dense foliage. And you can see here that the gun handling is more than good enough to play this sniping role. And for a bottom level era three light tank, it's uh, it's not too bad at all. It's definitely not one of the best tanks I've ever played, but it's not one of the worst. And it's uh, one of the easier tanks to three mark or four mark or the gold marks if you're interested in that in era three uh, that's something to bear in mind if you collect your marks this is one of the easier ones along with the m3a2 bradley which i should have a little mini review and some gameplay coming out of that tank very soon as well but you can see here that we are losing by two tanks so i'm just hoping that our tanks just don't continue to keep pushing um i was trying to get flanking sort of 
shots in because I have the concealment to do so and the mobility to do so. But the whole team seem to have just gone forward. Um, they haven't realised that it is an assault and that we don't have to push forward. They can let the enemy come to us. And that's something to bear in mind for every player is to bear in mind sometimes the game mode. It can be easy just to forget about it completely, but it does... Uh, it does have an impact on the game. You can win just by sticking around and defending the cap circle on assault, but fortunately we're getting some nice flanking fire in and we have some um, capable bots or real players on our team that are also taking some tanks out and it's now five against five with five minutes left. We should have the advantage now, especially considering that enemy Leopard 2A5 is on low hit points and um, it's probably now uh, time to make a move in the Stingray to use the mobility and the concealment factor to get some more shots in uh, unfortunately for us, we did get spotted there just as uh, we went round. There's that M1A2, I believe, there. So the smoke screen come in handy there. And this is when it does come in handy is uh, people would have easily been able to fire at us from across the map. We're quite a big silhouette on a ridge line. Uh, we do take a shot there, but it looks like it was uh, either a, a low roll or um, an HE round that didn't penetrate. And they were trying to escape the shells of that M1A2. We fortunately managed to do so. We're just wiggling around and he gets taken out i think it was an m1a1 actually and now uh, it's about finding the last three tanks and it's um a bit scary now because i am a one shot but we've already had a pretty decent game and we're going to see what we can get out of it um i was hoping that the, the bots weren't going to be too good and i can just boost my damage numbers up to make myself look as good as possible um i'm guessing that a lot of the tanks are going to be hiding towards the sort of north in the sort of b7 uh, b8 area and that little hill that overlooks uh, the 9 and 0 line so I'm going to try and come around here get some flanking shots in and see what kind of damage I can do so we're coming up here we do spot this uh, MBT 70 fortunately he's at one shot so we get a shot into him get that kill we're reversing back you see the reverse speed still isn't brilliant um, but it's enough and now we see the last two are spotted so now we're going to go forward and support our team and uh, play that support role that this tank does play reasonably well. So now we've chosen our target, it's the uh, T-72BU. The penetration with this premium that we only have left, we don't have any standard AP FSDS left, is more than enough to go through the sides and rear of the T-72BU. You can see the DPM is pretty reasonable for a 105mm gun and it's more than enough to help us get the last kill there on that bot and it's the last bot alive in the m1 just going to wait for him to carry on driving into the open hopefully get a shot into his drive wheel and get some assistance and he gets ultimately taken out by the tank destroyer the type 89 and our team and that's it for that last game where we finish in the mvp slot with four kills 8k direct damage 652 um assistance 1580 base experience points we make a small profit because we fired quite a few premium rounds and it looked like i was actually still grinding for um the engine perhaps in this game um, but we do have these we did have the upgraded turret in this game but i hope that this video has given you a good indication of how to play this tank in that kind of hybrid light tank medium tank support sniper role and i hope that it was either enjoyable and or informative and thank you very much for the support and until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now